morning. Well, with our service today being about seeds and soil and blessing all of creation, it seemed fitting that we start with an image of roots because it speaks to the way that our plants are rooted in good soil and bear good fruit, but also in the way that we can be rooted in good soil of our lives and in our values and our communities to bear good fruit in, in God's way and for the goodness of the world. So I'll just begin this with a prayer before I have a time of reflection this morning. Join with me. Creator and sustainer of all living things, be with us today as we bless seeds and soil and we root ourselves in learning and grow ourselves toward a world where all may be safe and all may be truly fed. Amen. Our first slide shows an image of what it might look like for Ruth to have been out in the fields and in this particular version it talks about the fields being barley. Um, but I love this passage, partly because my great grandma's name was Ruth, and so it's a special name for me, but the story works so well in this time because it, it goes back to the experiences of sharing food and all the images of our lives going back to the essence of food and how essential it is for living and being. And when I think about sharing food, that goes back for me to times when we were very young and we would get ready for church services and I remember us getting all dressed for the nativity play, getting ready for the Bethlehem story. And in those days, we not only got food ready for the food bank to bring to church, but we had to also wrap them in, uh, in the white paper and get them ready for the service. And that just seemed like a really important image that we would act out throughout the church year as we acted out that important story. <clears throat> and I love the notion of sharing when we have so much because in many times in our lives, we don't have a lot, a need might arise. And our place in the world is so rooted in those basic rights to be rooted in food and rooted in safety. So there's a saying that a coincidence is a miracle in which God prefers to remain anonymous. And I like that one because in our scripture today, the, the face of God comes forward in the form of Boaz being kind and welcoming to a newcomer. So Ruth has been given permission to go out and glean in the barley to sustain herself and her mother-in-law, Naomi. And so it says she came to the part of the field that Boaz owned. So he was a community leader and a pillar of the community and a relative of Naomi's dead husband. These women were very vulnerable and they were relying on other people to see fit to take care of them and include them somehow in the community. And at that time, it made the difference between eating or not eating. So the field of barley is pretty ordinary for that time, and the players in it are just doing their ordinary roles, harvesting as they would have done. But the love of spirit shows up in this real human action. And so it's not a small thing that Boaz took the time to take notice of Ruth. He compliments her on her loyalty to her mother-in-law. And now Ruth, who's not only an outsider, but also a foreigner and a widow, now has access to a supply of local food and a sense of belonging and security in the community. She is in a time of refuge and need, and Boaz blesses her. Together they are rooted in food and rooted in community. So I, it's pretty obvious that I love the message in this simple scripture because the one who has access to land and food and power intentionally shares that abundance. And some of you might already be asking, so what is gleaning really? It's not a word we often use anymore these days, except for maybe gleaning knowledge from other people. It's not really an everyday term anymore, and its roots are found in Leviticus in the Bible, where the Israelites have been instructed to leave the edge of their fields so that others, well, the, others can find the extra produce that has not been harvested yet. So that's to gather the extra produce that's left or anything that's also fallen to the ground. And those were very distinct rules that were provided. And the same is meant to be done with vineyards, that the pickers were meant to only take the ripe grapes and leave more behind so that other people who were marginalized in the community, those who might have been poor or also immigrants, had access to food. They wouldn't have had many other options, so hard labor was their only way to get their next meal on the table. So these ancient laws of Israel included how to treat newcomers and those who did not have a lot. And it wasn't even meant to be a choice 
or a, a thoughtful extra. It was meant to be an obligation. And I think sometimes we uh, need to be reminded of some of those old rules that uh, take care of others. <clears throat> so today I have a couple examples and the next slide shows a community project that is close to my heart. Um, my in-laws are quite involved in the farming community and my mother-in-law Donna is a compulsive project person and an economic developer and a community project person and she has the big visions and she gets the, part the partners together to make things happen. So Harvest Bowl is a little charity in Elgin County that takes what's been left behind in the fields and or what's been left behind in processing and puts it together to make a food product. And it really is a modern vision of what gleaning can look like because we may not be able to just let people go into various fields and take what they need, but this allows the process for food to be harvested safely and converted into a shelf stable product and they make soup mixes out of the final product. So this picture shows a mountain of green beans and the green beans get tipped and they get cut and they get dried. And the other image shows the dicer and uh, some of our older boys have had turns helping with the dicer as well. It's pretty cool, one of those power tools that people like. But you can feed the food through the dicer and everything comes out uniform. And I think the next picture will be able to see where it goes. So this long sheet of green that you're seeing is diced food and it goes into shelves into a modified, um, it's a modified tobacco kiln. And tobacco kilns are not in great use anymore in our area, so they've converted it and it goes through a 24-hour drying process. And all those little tiny bits of vegetables then get collected and bagged and folks come into the community and make them into these little soup packets. And we have um, a, a food science person who was trained, uh, back in the day it was called a home economist. She puts together a bunch of recipes that make sense that are nourishing and that folks can just basically add some water to and make a soup which is a fantastic product for small households and larger households too and they also have larger bags that they use to bring to the food programs and the soup programs so that organizations can make larger batches too and the next slide i think shows some of the workers so even in this covid time the group has been able to get together they've followed health unit protocols and they've set up some all of their gowning in and all their signing in and temperatures in and they're able to do a small line to get all the flavors and the vegetables and the beans and whatnot together packaged up. And the little logo shows you kind of the whole image of it. It's, it's the idea of holding the community together and holding the best of harvest into one place and making that bowl happen so that folks can have a good meal. And in Elgin County, we, we may not have the same kind of diversity that happens in London, but I can tell you that this room in the village of Lyons has had people from um, the Christian Reformed Church, the Presbyterian Church, the C community of the uh, Church of Christ, the United Church folks, um, kids from local schools on their PA days, and uh, sometimes we're also blessed with visitors from the Mennonite community and the Amish community. So many hands working together for a, a common goal. And I just think it's a really nice little example of uh, the way that it's rooted in intention and rooted in food and rooted in community. So the next slide shows uh, another similar organization doing equally great work uh, with a couple different tweaks. So this one's called the Raw Carrot and it, was, it has its roots in the village of Paris, which is not too far away either. And they're, they're focusing on the value of one and the power of many. And their model not only includes finding surplus food and producing a soup product, Theirs is a soup product that is in a zip bag and is ready to use for anyone. But the extra special feature of this one is it's usually housed in um, various churches can host the organization and have a, a workshop. But the people who work there represent the whole community. So it's also meant to be a place for people who can find employment, who have um, different abilities. And some would call that a disability, but it's people who uh, so much deserve a valued role in the community and they get to come and have a job and contribute to the slicing and the dicing that makes this awesome nourishing product. So the sale of the food product then goes, it's a social enterprise and the sale goes to benefit, um, to pay for the equipment and the payroll and especially to ensure that folks who are differently abled have a valued place and role in the community. So there's one more picture there, I think, of just showing the, the work be and, uh, and their goals, which sound a lot like church, <laughs> coming together to build connection and community. 
So I like this example of gleaning done a little bit differently, but also still that essence of being rooted in values and rooted in food and again rooted in community. So the next one is, um, I work with many farmers in my other position with the Federation of Agriculture and a few weeks ago I was at a session, we, we help farmers learn how to talk to the media because the media wants to talk to farmers and we find that farmers use a lot of farmy words and people don't understand what they're saying. And so we, we help practice get the farmers to translate their farm techn technology language to the common people that aren't used to this, um, all the equipment and techniques that they use. And I was talking with Jen last night and she's one of the farmers that I work with. And it was really great seeing the kind of passion <clears throat> that she brings to how she talks about her story. <clears throat> and she speaks passionately about her crop but uh, they also have, they grow crops, they grow seeds, and they also have a bee farm. It's all part of their enterprise together. And that's with her spouse and her kids in Eastern Ontario. And they did have a challenging transition between a previous family business and where they find themselves now. But when she speaks now of her focus, you can see her values shining through and she speaks that they don't want to just grow a crop year after year. They also want to select techniques that benefit pollination, and choose different equipment and different styles of, of cropping and treating the land so that they're building it up and nourishing it and leaving that land better than it was before they began. So when I hear Jen speak, I hear that she's also rooted in family and rooted in food and rooted in community. And this next story is a, is a challenging one and it's one that we are faced with this week as we grapple with sad and scary news that family and friends in, our, in the nearby Muslim community are not feeling safe and that terrorism does exist here and it makes us question a lot of things and how we can do better and what voice we can lend to it. And it might seem a bit strange that I have a farm connection to this one too, but I always manage to find a way to do that. So my friend Patrick uh, farms not too far from here, a bit north of here, and he shared a story this week that uh, really spoke to the connections we can find if we're looking for a way to find that love between people who are different. So he says, I'm still numb. The Afzal family visited my family a few years ago. Salman and his brother wanted to surprise their dad with a goat, which would have been part of a special family and religious ceremony. It was for a celebration. So we got together in the farmyard and we spoke about thousands of years of farming tradition between their family and my family. And he says, we spoke about the horror that both of our families endured during war times in our home countries. And we spoke about the experiences of xenophobia that both of our families endured in Canada. We understood our shared goals to end hate and our shared love for Canada, our shared understanding of acceptance. And Patrick says, I think I'll be numb for a while. Islamophobia and xenophobia and racism get their roots in hate. But he says nobody's born with hate and we can choose to love. The next slide brings us back to the wheat field or the barley field that brings home that story. So his story reminds me that we all have common connections if we're willing to take the time to look other people in the eye, regardless of status or power, whether or not we own land or what kind of background we have. Patrick and Salman found they had shared roots in food and farming and family and an immigration story and a vision for love. And I know we don't all have a field of barley, literally, to share with each other to illustrate our commitment to what an inclusive and accepting community would be where all could be fed and all would be welcome. But I think we can maintain our roots and our values and we can come alongside people that are different or new to ensure that they too would be rooted in our community together. So together with spirit, may our roots run deep, reaching into deep soil and growing stronger and better together. May it be so.